everyone it fits with the walk and talk. Well, 34 nothing. K-State beats South Dakota. Maybe not as uh, thorough as some expected. You know, the offense had its moments, but um, uh, there's, there's certainly some stuff to work on. Adrian Martinez, let's get started there. Everyone's going to have questions about it. The media had questions about him. Um, and then Adrian was the last player to come in. I, I thought he was good. I thought he was good, not great. Um, I think he was really conscious of not making mistakes. I think they intentionally didn't throw the ball downfield. Um, I, I felt like Colin knew he had a really good play to start the game. I mean, I think they, you know, the players said they worked on it quite a bit, that it was something that they had a feeling would go, and it did, um, as good as you could expect it. Got off to the fast start, you know, get the block punt, get more points. Um, there was just no pressure on them. They didn't have to throw the ball downfield. So Adrian became more of a game manager than he probably ever was at Nebraska. They got very conservative. You could tell Colin was a Snyder guy there for a while. They got pretty conservative. They started running the quarterback draw. They started running between the tackles quite often. It became a point, I think, where Colin Klein didn't want to continue to show things out of his playbook. He wanted to keep that in check. The defense played a lot of guys, a lot of guys. Um, and pitch a shutout. And keep in mind, South Dakota was a playoff team last year, it's supposed to be a contender in the Missouri Valley with, uh, along with South Dakota State and, and uh, North Dakota State. That's a really pretty good football team for their level. And K-State handled them. They, they didn't look good. I mean, they dropped a lot of passes. It, you just gotta be honest about it. I think South Dakota got on their bus tonight and said, we can play a lot better than we did. That's, that's not who we are. Um, but K-State defensively, they were pretty sound, and they're very dynamic up front. The Wildcats just have so much talent up front. Uh, they were missing some players on that defense. Sean Robinson was out. Um, Josh Hayes was out, which was unexpected. I believe both will be ready to go against Missouri. We'll see as the week develops, but um, they should be all ready to go. And uh, I think that defense will be at full strength. Duke played quite a bit, which Coach Kleiman was very happy about because he uh, he said he just needed to get out there and run around and play. But um, look, I, I know some of you are a little bit maybe concerned about the fact that they didn't put the gas down. Now, I, I just think the days of that, um, it's not the same anymore. You just don't do that to opponents. And um, I could tell Colin was holding back. And defensively, the, the goal was to just play a ton of guys. They played a ton of guys on offense, too. But uh, defensively, they, they were going into the three deep, and those guys were still playing well. And, you know, they ended up preserving the shutout at the end of the game with, with all backups, um, but making a big play. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm relatively pleased after this. But even though I know that K-State can play better, they can uh, be more dynamic on offense, I'll just say that um, if K-State really wants to reach the next level, um, yeah, that's a good background. If K-State wants to reach the next back, uh, next level, Adrian's going to have to have another level to his game. Uh, he didn't have the pressure to do what he did um, at Nebraska. Nobody expects him to make all the big plays. You know, he had Malik Knowles from the very start make a big play. And Deuce Vaughn make a big play. There's other guys that can do it. Special teams can take care of business at Kansas State. Defense is sound. I mean, if you have questions about the offense, you probably shouldn't about the defense because even when they dug down into uh, depth at nose tackle, they were still efficient. Defensive ends, Brandon Mott gets a sack. I mean, here's a guy that you know, kind of came out of nowhere and, and now is going to play quite a bit. This is a, this is a good starting point. So if you're worried, don't be. I think they're going to be okay. They're going to be, uh, this is going to be a, a fun, fun football team. But really, to me, to me today's story was about Colin Klein and what he did as an offensive coordinator. We saw little glimpses of it. We saw the rhythm, the pace. Um, but I also think it's clear we're not going to see nearly, what do I want to say here? 
we're going to see a lot more against Missouri. And they're going to put more out there. But as much as he's learned from other people, he's still a Snyder guy. He's still a guy that's going to be fairly conservative in how he goes about uh, putting things on the field and not wanting to show too much. And I think it's going to make for a really fun season as they unveil more and more of Colin Klein, Adrian Martinez, and all the other weapons on offense. That's it for the walk and talk. We will uh, talk to you after Tuesday's press conference and make sure you're checking out the daily deliveries. If you're uh, not a subscriber to Go Power Cat, 75% off right now. Go take advantage of it.